What's up guys, it's Collect Fiend here again. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I don't normally print on fabric and stuff like that, but today I'm just gonna give you a little kind of heads up on how to do it in case you're interested. There are other videos on the internet. But basically, the easiest way is using this fabric called Tool, fab tool, uh, tool I think it's called, M material, I don't know. Essentially, it's super fine. It's like that, it's like a couple of microns thick. It's it's really easy to print on as well, but um, yeah, there you go. That's what it looks like. You can get it in all sorts of colors, <coughs> but these are the results. So here we go. I'm gonna kind of go through these one by one. I've, some of them are on poly cotton, some are on others, other stuff, but mainly it's tool fabric. So there you go. All right, here we go. All right, so essentially, I'm not actually be showing you how to do it because I've thought about it. There are loads of videos on the internet um, showing you how to do it already so I'm just gonna kind of go through some experiments of what I've been doing with it. These are quite old as well so um, I just had them sitting around for a while but the nice thing about printing on fabric or actually one of the things I would mention is like you should print with salt using the salt method because the underside you get that nice kind of <coughs> well there you go you get that kind of sparkly pattern effect because um, obviously the bottom of the, the bed is glass and uh, yeah, that looks quite cool. And as you've noticed, I've printed it in a reverse on the back side, so it's always the right way around. If you look really closely, you'll know that you might see the color of the dots on the back, but who cares? Anyway, this is like printed with circles. Then you've got, um, <coughs> done some like snowflake designs as well. And as you can see here, I've got some cuts on the uh, fabric. You're probably wondering why, why have you done that? So basically, one of the main problems with printing on fabric is obviously having the head fold the fabric up and then obviously start printing over the fabric, which you don't want. So what I would suggest to do is what I've done here. This is glow in the dark, by the way, which looks quite cool in the dark. Um, if you're going to put gaffer tape on it, which is probably the, the best thing to use because it comes off really easy in the heat. And um, what I would do is cut little bits of hole or holes kind of in the fabric and then put the gaffer tape over it because that means the gaffer tape will stick there preventing anything from peeling up as you put it over the top because you'll find the gaffer tape curling up quite easily so essentially cut some holes near your object and when you go over it make sure to cover those holes as well and then obviously the fabric won't peel up there you have it but essentially these are the same but these are glow-in-the-dark so they look really cool Right, the next one is this kind of weird, kind of, I don't know, I just printed loads of things going one way and then the other way and then put them next to each other and then alternated them just to see what kind of patterns I'd get. That's the pattern on the bottom, if you want to have a look. Don't even know if this is in focus or not, hold on, I'm using my rostrum for the first time in about 20 years, I don't know, okay. Anyway, let's have a look. All right, so I'll just, I'll just do this all a bit closer now so you can have a look. There you go. Let's see if it will get a bit closer. I'm finding the lens really heavy on this rostrum. It just it wants to fall down. But there you go, that's how it looks. Again, if you use the salt method, you get nice shiny bottoms. <clears throat> and I also <laughs> I attempted half to, um, cross hatch which turned out quite bizarre. In fact, it's, it's a bit too stiff and this fabric is uh, obviously not tool fabric. This is like just poly cotton or something. Again, it printed, <laughs> actually printed on it fairly well. It's not coming off, but it's just too rigid and um, yeah, it's not it's not good. Interesting experiment though. I tried it again, obviously, with grey and Dutch colour fab orange. It kind of this was before the salt method, so I had to use a scraper to scrape it up and it just ended up damaging it too much. So um, this one definitely came out a bit nicer, but I wouldn't recommend using a scraper and only the salt method. And um, another one, I think we've got these star ones, which as you can see, got little bits of orange in there as well. Quite funky looking. <coughs> a couple of those. What else have I got? I've got the classic, you know, with grid type thing, you know, again, very quite, very cool in the light and it does scrunch up really nicely as well. Let me just zoom out. 
So that's that. Then you've got the classic just squares grid. Again, looks really cool in the light. On this side, doesn't. But there you go. That's just to say, you know, no errors. <laughs> However, then you have another one here, which is the classic, obviously, kind of, well, let me just correct the uh, focus, you've got the kind of, yeah, spiky armour type thing. But yeah, this is a good example, actually, of showing you why not to use the scraper method. Like here, you can see holes where, essentially, by scraping it, you're damaging the fabric. It's just don't use don't use a scraper if you're going to be printing on fabric. You'll rip the fabric. That's that one. Then we got some funny mess around stuff. I was doing like Tetris. So that's Tetris. How about the back? Oh, see, I didn't print this one reverse on the other side. It's this kind of satisfying feel to it. Just these kind of I don't know. There's something nice about it. But yeah, essentially. If you leave it, that's how it kind of sits. But yeah, that's the Tetris kind of mat. Then you've got, this is again another example of printing onto polycotton. Um, as you can see on the back, um, these bits don't really stay on very well. That These are the one layer bits. But the other side seems to be holding up alright. So. Um, you can, there is some certain element of success in printing onto fabric rather than relying directly, you know, like heating it in. It's melted into the fabric as opposed to being fused between fabric, like with a tool fabric. And then, you know, if you want it to fall apart, I guess you can have an exhibition where you print on it and it falls apart as well, if that's your kind of thing. Um, but yeah, okay, so that's that one. And here's my, get rid of these bits again. Here's just to prove that this is what I gave me the idea of the Tetris thing anyway in the first place because the first time I printed this square thing it kind of messed up in a couple of areas because the temperature wasn't right. I found that 215 degrees for colour fab is perfect otherwise it just doesn't stick to the glass or salt and glass or whatever so um, there you have it. 215 is the sweet spot for me. Anyways here's the Tetris one done again properly so that's the back and that's the front so essentially one slice has been flipped on the other side and again really satisfying to feel and last but not least got the Hello Kitty one that I made up I did this in baby blue and pink as well but I gave it to a friend so that's that one and this one I did again wrong I did it upside down so there you go that's the other side the front side that's the back side Anyway, I think that's most of my selection. I hope you have fun enjoying it. Nice little short video. Catch you later. Bill and Ted, hope you liked the video. Just uh, thought I'd give you guys some inspiration. Um, and uh, yeah, have a Merry Christmas. Peace, see you later.